Just to thank you, praise you. We thank you for uh, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for your presence. Oh, I just looked at myself and these precious people and and this word to you. And I just thank you for using me as, uh, as a vessel to speak your word through. Father, I pray that you give us all uh, ears to hear and hearts to uh, to trust and obey what you're saying to us in Jesus' name. Today's message is called, He's a Good, Good Father. I like that song, Tan. And we will start out in Luke chapter 8, and, uh, with verse 4. So we're going to start out with the, the sower parable. And uh, a parable is basically a earthly story designed to um, help us understand heavenly truth. And so this is Jesus in Luke chapter 8 verse 4. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it withered away because of the moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. But others fell on good ground, sprang up, and yielded a crop a hundredfold. When he had said these things, he cried, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Now my guess would be that probably everyone there had ears, or about you know 99.9 or 100 percent of people that that were in this multitude actually had natural ears. So he's talking about spiritual hearing. He's talking about he who has a an ear to actually hear what I'm saying, an ear to receive what I'm saying, an ear to apply what I'm saying. And his disciples asked him, what does this parable mean? And he said, to you it has been given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to the rest it is given in parables that seeing they may not see, and hearing they may not understand. And basically he's saying, their hearts are so hard and they're not able to receive what I'm saying spiritually. But now he explains the parable to him. He says, now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. Okay, somebody say, the seed is the word of God. That's what it is. Okay? So the words of God are seeds. Those by the wayside are the ones who hear, then the devil comes and takes away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Lest they believe and be saved. Okay, so what, what saves them? Believe in the words, and then it saves them. But the ones on the rock are those, when they hear, they receive the word with joy, and these have no root, who believe for a while, in time of temptation, fall away. So, verse 12, it says, believe and be saved. And then it says in verse 13, believe for a while. So that means they believe for a while, were saved for a while, and in time of temptation, though, they fell away. So there's a group of people, I think, I think, the once saved, always saved doctrine is kind of somewhat dangerous because it doesn't. The Bible doesn't really teach it. It's, the Bible teaches that those who believe and keep on believing are saved. It doesn't teach those that are. You believe once, you confess Jesus as Lord, and then you live for the devil the rest of your life. It doesn't. It doesn't teach that. So it says, in a time of temptation, fellow. Now the ones that fell among the thorns are those. When they have heard, go out and are choked with cares, riches, and pleasures of life, and bring no fruit to maturity. That's like, okay, so you hear the word of God, that eh, sounds kind of good, but I got, I'm going to go just go on with my regular life. But the ones that fell on the good ground are those have, are ha of those who, having heard the word with a noble and good heart, keep it and bear fruit with patience. So let's look at um, John 15. 
basically verse 15, he's like those who bear fruit. He's saying those who hear the word of God and do the word of God. Who's who hear, those who hear the word of God and do the word of God. Those who keep hearing the word of God and doing the word of God. John uh, chapter 15. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. How much can we do without Jesus? Nothing. Nothing. Zero. Nothing productive. In, in, in heaven's eyes, in God's eyes, anything we do without him, is, it's unproductive. But it says, abide in Jesus. If we abide in him, it says, it, it's telling us how to bear much fruit. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. So how do you bear much fruit? Relation, stay in the relationship. Stay in the relationship. Continue in the relationship. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered, and they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. Boy, that's bad. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. So we contrast verse 6 and 7. If anyone does not abide in me, it doesn't say, it says if anyone. If anyone. Does not abide in me, is cast out as a branch, is withered, they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. What's that mean exactly? You know, some people say it's a loss of reward, some people say it's hell. Um, I'd, rather, I'd rather be on the safe side and just keep abiding in me. Verse 7. If you abide in me, there's a promise. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire, and it shall be done for you. There, there's a prayer promise. Abide in Jesus, hear his words, do what he says, your prayers get answered. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. So we glorify Father by staying in Jesus, hearing what Jesus says, doing what Jesus says, and staying in the relationship. That's the safe place. Let's go to Luke chapter 15. This is the, uh, it's known as the, as the prodigal son parable. I'm going to call it the good, good father parable. The good, good father. Luke 15 chapter, uh, or verse 11. Uh-huh. This is Jesus speaking. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them, I'm just going to go ahead and read the whole, go through the whole story, and then we'll go through it. Kind of verse by verse. So. Then Jesus said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he, he divided to them his livelihood. He not only gave it to the one son, he gave it to the other two. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living, with uh, wasteful living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in one. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into the, his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods of the swine's ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he, was still, when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. 
And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of his servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father pleaded, came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you, I have never transgressed your commandment. And not at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I may make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came who has devoured your livelihood with the harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It was right that we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is found. Okay, so again, a, par a, par a parable is a, an earthly story designed to show us and help us understand spiritual truths. So I believe the father in this, in this story is a representation of Father God. And uh, so we look, we go back to verse 11, and it's showing like, imagine Father God has two sons in the story. And the younger one says to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to him, to them all his livelihood. So look at it kind of like, let's say you have a couple of kids and, and you said, hey, when you're sometime between 18 and 21 years old, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you $10,000. Because you're my kid and I love you. And, I, and, I've, and I've got the 10,000. And so you just, you're just here with me. It's either, <laughs> Hold on a second. <laughs> we need the car keys. Okay, I'm going to trust you that uh, someone with a license is going to drive. It's almost safe. <laughs> okay, I wasn't expecting that. All right. Where were we? Um, it's going to get ten thousand dollars. So we have. Imagine you're going to give your you know your thousand dollars each. So just, sometime when you're uh, 18, 21 years old, in there. Anytime after 18, you know, come to me and I'll, and I'll give you the ten thousand dollars. And so the younger one says, "Hey, Dad, I'd like. I'm 18 now. I'd like my ten thousand. And so Father gives you the ten thousand. <laughs> And because he gave the younger one the 10000 the older one hadn't asked for his 10000 yet, but he gives the older one too, here's your 10000 Okay? And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he takes his possessions, he takes what he'd been given, he takes his $10,000, so to speak, or whatever's worth $10,000, he takes it and he's like, I'm heading out home, I'm heading out. Journeys to a far country. The oldest son, he stays with father. So, one thing I noticed here is father didn't have a going away party when the son left. He has a coming home party when the son comes home, but he doesn't have a going away party for when the son's leaving. Because he knows that this is not really going to be good for his son. He's going to a far country, which I believe represents, he's going to, you got Father God, kingdom of light. You got far country away, kingdom of darkness. He's about to go into a dark place. So there he wastes all his possessions on wasteful living. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe fa famine in that land, and he began to be in one. So younger son, you know, but just like in uh, 
in Luke there, it says, did, did the younger son believe in father? Yes, he did. He lived with him. He lived with father. But a time of temptation came. Another voice came and said, hey, I want to experience some things that I can't do here at father's house. I know I can't have my girlfriend over to spend the night here at Father's house. I know I can't get drunk here at Father's house. I have some voices speaking in my head, time of temptation, that, hey, I want to go out and experience it, and it's not allowed here at Father's house. So I'm going to take what Father gave me, and I'm going to go experience the world, because I think that's going to be better for me. Part one, part two. And so anybody, though, that's a child of God that knows Father, that's experienced Father at all, when they move out of Father's kingdom, they're going to experience a severe famine. And that's what he experienced. Now, he experienced it in natural possessions. It could be that, you know, if we leave Father's house, we might be the famine comes in natural possessions. But there's for sure going to be a spiritual famine coming. Of peace, his presence, and joy, and... There's that, that spiritual famine. We are going to be hungry because we're going to miss Father. It says he began to be in one. So his first thing is, okay, I've got to, I've got to, I've got to come up with a way here to be able to, to sustain myself. So he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed the swine. So at Father's house, there was always provision, and now he's moved out of Father's provision, Father's protection, and now he's living in a far country which symbolizes darkness. He's living in the kingdom of darkness. And he's in a famine. He's in, he has a job feeding the swine. He's in pig manure. And it says that he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods of the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. Which means that he's in the pig manure doing pig slop, and it's like, well, you got your check coming in two weeks. Oh, you're hungry now? Well, in two weeks you get your check. No one would give him anything. He wasn't called to the kingdom of darkness. He's not supposed to be there. You know, we could picture this like the Holy Spirit convincing us of all truth. If we're getting out of that, it's like the Holy Spirit's trying to bring us back, go back to Father's house, go back to Father's house, go back to Father's house. In verse 17 it says, But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? That's a good verse. It's like verse 17. Verse 17. It's like the light bulb came back on. He got repentance. He's like, I'm going to change my mind. I like, I had it better at Father's house, even though I was his son. I had it real well. But I looked, and you know, even the servants had it way better than it is here. They weren't starving to death. Father had plenty for them. He says, I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he, he's like, well, I'm no longer, I've messed up my position as son to father because I dishonored him so much. I really made a huge mistake. I've dishonored father, but you know what? I can go back there and I think he'll take me on at least as a servant. And I'll have it way better than here. At least I won't starve to death. So the son has repentance, which is a change of mind and a change of action. A change of mind and a change of action. He's like, hey, I'm over in this far country. I'm over here in this dark place. I'm over here. I'm over here in a place where I'm naturally and spiritually starving to death. I'm going to go back to my father's house. And I'll just be a servant there. But better to be a servant there than starve to death here.
So he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. So there's the heart of father. The heart of father is as soon as he repented, as soon as the son comes back, as soon as the son comes back, he's actually looking for him. He's like, oh, there's my son. There's my son. And he comes back and he doesn't, he doesn't even say anything about, son, how could you have dishonored me? He doesn't even say anything about, son, how could, how could you have done all this? How, how could you have lived like you lived? How could you have even ever wanted to leave? He doesn't even bring it up. He's just happy his son's back. Right? And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Bring out the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. So he's, he's restored to all the privileges of sonship. The, the ring was a, a symbol of, you know, he, he would, it's a business thing. It's a business transaction. He was recognized as father's son. He, 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 could, go in, he could go into town and make a uh, transaction Amen. by father's name. And bring back the fatted calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. So there's father's coming home party. He has a coming home party for his son. Remember, there was no going away party because he was leaving, but there was a coming home party because he's coming home. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, I'm sorry, I missed one verse. So verse 23 was, bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. This is a key verse. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. Glory to God. Glory to God. He's saying, he was my son even when he left, but when he went into spiritual darkness, he was spiritually dead. He was in spiritual danger. He was still, I still loved him. I still loved him. He was still always my son, but he was in a place where he was not, no longer under my protection. Notice father didn't send him funds to continue in darkness. Father didn't say, father didn't like, okay, there's so he gave him, he gave him what he had coming. When what he had coming was gone, father didn't send him another check to stay in the darkness. See, there's spiritual truths we can learn here. See, sometimes we can be possibly guilty of enabling people to stay in the darkness. When Father wants them to have a spiritual famine to come out of the darkness and come back into the light. Wow. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. So if we go back to what was it in, um, in Luke chapter 8. talks about in verse uh, 12 those by the wayside are the ones who hear then the devil comes and takes the word out of their hearts lest they should believe and be saved so they believe believing or saved but the ones in the rock are those when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root who believe for a while and in time of temptation fall away so they're believe for a while, they're saved for a while, in time of temptation fall away. So we have we have we have here the son who believed for a while, was at father's house for a while, believed in father, stayed with father, believed with him, believed with him. But he had a time of temptation and he walked away. And so he was in great spiritual danger. And that's why 
when Father, that's why Father says that when he comes back, then he says, my son was dead and is alive again. My son was dead and is alive again. He was, he was alive when he was at Father's house, and he was dead when he was in Satan's house. And so that's why we should have a great coming home party, because I'm so happy my son is alive. He was still my son when he was in the kingdom of darkness. He was still my son, but he was in danger of being in eternal damnation. Here's another example. Jesus called Judas friend when, Jesus, when Judas came to betray Jesus. Jesus addressed him as friend. Amen. And so we know Jesus can't lie, so he didn't lie. Right. So he, Jesus saw Judas as his friend. And Jesus is in hell. Jesus' friend Judas is in hell. How do I know that he's in hell? The Bible tells me so. There's about three places in the Bible that talks about Judas being there. But was it Jesus' will for Judas to go to hell? No. It wasn't. It's not his will that you, me, or anybody else would go to hell either. Because it says so, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. That whoever would believe in him would not perish, but all would have everlasting life. That's his will. Timothy it talks about God's will, that no man would perish. So that's his will. Verse 25. Now his older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. So at Father's house, there's music and dancing. It's just the kingdom of light. It's the light club, not the night club. And he said to him, your brother has come, and because he has received him safe and sound, your father has killed the fatted calf. But he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I have been serving you. I have never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. Bless you. It was right that we should, make, we should make merry and be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So now we have the older son. And we have a really good, good father being patient with older son who has a really bad attitude. And so if it were if it were true that oldest son, if what he said in verse 29 was true that I never transgressed your commandment, if that's true, um, it was no longer true after he just spoke, just spoke those words. Because he was angry without justifiable reason sin. He was jealous of brother, sin. This son of yours, esteeming, the Bible says, esteem others better than yourself. He talks down to brother, this, ah, this son of yours. So he seen himself as brother, better than brother. Doesn't say so in the text, but it could have been a possible reason that brother left in the first place. If the bride brother had that attitude. And so, you know, this is a this is an example of of a person that's loving God and loving himself, but Jesus said to also love your neighbor as yourself. Yeah. And and he isn't doing that one very well. And he also is a lies because he says, This son of yours has devoured your livelihood with arguments. Well, Father's livelihood was still fine. Father had plenty. He didn't even devour Father's livelihood. He just devoured what Father gave him. He didn't devour Father. Father still had plenty of provision, and it didn't affect, it didn't affect the older son at all either. The older son still had it, all his provision. He still had it, but 
He has the accuser of the brethren spirit working for him, working through him. It was right that we should be merry, be merry and glad, be glad, for your brother was dead and is alive again, and was lost and is and is found. He tells the older son, it was right that we should make Mary be glad for your brother was dead and is alive again, was lost and is found. So we need to make sure that we don't have a voice of temptation that has a temptation to leave Father's house. I'm not talking about kind of glory fire. I'm talking about the kingdom of God. Because the voice is in the atmosphere. In the United States, for sure, probably all over the world, the voice is in the atmosphere. I, I, I know one young man, he came into this church for a while, and um, I remember, it's probably been a couple years ago, and I remember Teresa Boutro saying, that young man is about to meet God. I didn't, I didn't know what she was saying. She seen him one time, she said, that young man's about ready to make a huge mistake. And I don't think he, I think that was the last time he was ever here. And that young man's in an homosexual uh, relationship now. And he's, I see him on Facebook bashing churches. Oh. Somebody that was in Father's house. Somebody that's not in Father's house. And we pray that he comes to himself, and has a change of heart and change of mind. And he gets back in the living waters instead of a far, far country. Oh my. In John uh, chapter 17. <coughs> Jesus says, This is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. This is eternal life to know him. This is eternal life to know him. This is eternal life to know him. And I know, I know from, uh, I know from experience of being in a church that it's, it, this isn't an eternal life to know about him. Because I had had knowledge of God for when I was a kid, but I didn't follow God. I didn't follow Jesus. I didn't know Jesus. I hadn't received Jesus. I just heard about it. That is an eternal life. You can plant seeds to get to there. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing. Hearing and doing the word. So the Bible in James just talks about be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Isaiah chapter 66. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make which I make shall remain before me, says the Lord, so shall your descendants in your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. And they shall go forth and look upon the corpses of the men who have transgressed against me. For their worm, worm does not die, and their fire is not quenched. They shall be in abhorrence to all flesh. So that's actually going to happen. For some reason, Father is going to let us have people have that. I don't know if it's like a millennial kingdom with the new heavens, the new earth, and. Everyone, everyone's going to come to a worship service, and everyone is going to look upon the corpses in hell, where the worm does not die. And their fire is not quenched. 
And so if you can picture, you can picture if we you know if we're in that in that in that place and we're like looking at them, it's like I don't know about you, but I'm gonna appreciate my salvation even more. Because that's gonna be like that that, that that's a horrible thing. And for them though, it's gonna be they see all the people, they see what they could have had and they don't have, and it's worse for them. Tickle our ears, Pastor Dan. Tell me something I want to hear. <laughs> Tell me something good. Tell me it's okay. <clears throat> so, what we're saying today is oh. He is a good, good Father, but He's also our life source. Yeah. He's our life source. He's yeah. not like a, He's not like a optional equipment. No. He's not like back pocket Jesus. I'll call you if I need you. Uh. We're supposed to love him with all of our heart, all our soul, all our mind, all our strength. Yeah. He's oh. supposed to be our most important relationship that we have. Yes. yes. So we need to make him that. And then we also, when we do that, then we're also in a place where those voices of temptation they won't they won't have a hold on us. Because God doesn't want to see anyone perish. We don't want to see anyone perish. But the good news is the son walked away and the son was able to come back. The sun walked away and the sun was able to come back. Because he repented. Yes. You have a question? You said that in Revelations were in Isaiah 66. Mm -hmm. That's what it says. I can't hear you. For sure. That's in the future, yeah. It's the future. It's after the new heavens and the new earth. Which that which actually is talked about in Revelation chapter 21. New earth, yep. Get a new earth. Right. So, Father, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for, um, we just thank you, Father, for each one of us, Father, continuing to stay in the relationship with you by your grace and by your wisdom. That each one of us, Father, would um, would make you the most important relationship that we have. That um, that all of us also, Father, would have just a, a real heart for Ooh. those that are lost, or for those that would be in a time of temptation to fall away. Father, you would speak through us the gospel of Jesus Christ. Father, and that you would uh, give us a heart to make disciples. And Father, we thank you, Father, for also just a, a, a grace to make disciples, Lord, that uh, continue to walk with you, continue to stay in your relationship, to make actual uh, those that bear much fruit. Father, we ask, Father, that uh, each of us as individuals, as, in, as, a, as a church, that we would bear much fruit here. And Father, we give you the praise, the honor, the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, anybody uh, wants prayer for anything? We'll pray for you.